Welcome to Designing Spaces Think Green, the show that's all about you, your living space, and living a more eco-friendly lifestyle. I'm David Jones. Now, all of us are becoming increasingly aware of how we affect our environment, our demand for the energy that powers our civilization, the air we breathe, the water so necessary for life, and the energy required to power our civilization must now be integrated into living a green lifestyle. A healthier environment means healthier lives for all of us. Designing Spaces believes it's time we take care of our home, the ultimate living space, planet Earth. Nearly every household in the country experiences higher and higher heating bills every winter. Designers have developed more cost-effective and sustainable methods to warm our homes. To look at stylish and eco-friendly heating appliances, we go to Minnesota with Think Green correspondent Heidi Fellner. Home heating is one of our heftiest monthly bills in wintertime, and the cost just continues to increase. But today, we have more choices than ever to save on heating in a green way using alternative fuels. Think Green visited the American Energy Systems factory in Hutchinson, Minnesota to find out how that's possible. Well, thanks for inviting us, Mike. You're welcome, Heidi. I'm excited to have you here to take a look at the latest in renewable energy appliances. Well, first, tell us what American Energy Systems is doing to change home heating by reducing the need for fossil fuels. Absolutely. What we've done is we've automated the combustion process and turned it into a highly efficient and clean burning appliance that you can heat your home and save tons of money. And I understand some of these use wood pellets, they use other fuels as well. Tell me more about that. Sure, there's many different fuels. The most popular, of course, is wood pellets. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they take waste materials like sawdust, garbage, that type of materials, and they condense it into a very hard little pellet. Okay. And that is augered into the system and it, into an environment that burns exceptionally clean and you get the most value for your money. Well, now, it looks like there are a lot of different styles to choose from. We have a theory that the homeowner should not have to buy something that they're forced into, but rather something that fits their lifestyle and their decor in their home. Now, I know these products are all made right here in the United States and that you're really proud of that, right? We're very proud of it. We, we've got our 30,000 square foot facility here, state of the art, and we do every single process to the appliances right here in Hutchinson, Minnesota. So I understand there's a home nearby and you're going to show us how easy these are to install and how beautiful they can make the inside of your home. Yes, that's the best part, Heidi. These homeowners have been heating for over 20 years with renewable energy, saving thousands of dollars. And besides that, it's just a nice romantic setting that you're going to see. Well, I can't wait. Let's go. All right. Well, this home seems so cozy and warm, but I know there's more to it. Once you find the right appliance, how do you know where to install it? The first thing you want to do is find out where you want the appliance to be in your home. Then you choose the right appliance that will fit that decor and look the best. An example would be this insulation. There was a gas fireplace in here, and the homeowner took that gas fireplace out and went ahead and put this nice tile and everything around it. And then they went to work and used this particular unit, it's a magnum pedestal unit, with a front-loading fuel door so that they're able to load the fuel into the unit from the front. So a perfect application or perfect fit for this home. So now that it's all installed, how do you operate it? It's really easy. We're ready to start the unit up. Oh, okay. So what, what's going to happen is we're going to go ahead and just open the door, mm -hmm. and we're going to take a small handful of starter fuel. So we put a small amount in, and then we use what's called a fire starter. We don't need a lot. Mm -hmm. We just need a little bit of a thread in there just to get the fire burning. So we'll squeeze a little bit of that in there. And then you take a lighter and light it up. Just like that? The unit's going to take about three minutes for all of the self-diagnostics and the safety system to say, all systems go, <laughs> and then we're going to start enjoying heat. Wonderful. 
Now, is the maintenance complicated on a unit like this? Actually, the units are designed with real ease of maintenance. There's some daily maintenance that maybe takes two to three minutes, some weekly maintenance that will take maybe five or ten minutes, mm -hmm. and then once a month you shut the system down for a thorough cleaning. You know, Mike, it is so fantastic to learn how green, renewable energy sources can bring so much comfort and security to our homes. That's right, Heidi. It is changing the way that people look at their home setting. It's bringing families together. Mm -hmm. the, before, the kids were up in the bedroom and the parents were downstairs. Now they all gather around the stove for a nice, cozy evening around the fire. So where can our viewers find products like these, and how can they figure out what's the right one for them? The best place to start, Heidi, is right at our factory website, MagnumHeat.com. Right there, you can look at the product selection guides, read information on the appliances, the experiences that people have had with different kinds of appliances, and from there, select just what is right for you. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Also, visit DesigningSpaces.tv and click into the Think Green section to watch this part of the program again. For Designing Spaces Think Green, I'm Heidi Fellner from Hutchinson, Minnesota. Even on Think Green, we do kitchen makeovers. And new cabinets can completely change the kitchen's look and character. But is it eco-friendly? Well, the answer is yes. To take a look at wood as a green product, here's Debbie Marie. Remodeling a home is not only an opportunity to increase its value, it's also an opportunity to convert our home to a greener one, one that is eco-friendly. One of the most versatile materials used in our homes is wood, and it's also one of the greenest. So why is wood such a good choice? Think Green went to one of the experts. The kitchen is getting a facelift, and the cabinets are getting redone to create a new warm look that lends a lot of character to the room, and it's eco-friendly. To talk to us today about the green movement in using wood in our remodeling and also your home remodels is Ralph Fair. He is the president of Elias Woodwork and Manufacturing. Ralph, welcome to Think Green. Good to be here. Okay, now I've heard of Elias Woodwork and Manufacturing being an advocate for everything green but when you're talking about using wood in your remodeling that involves chopping down trees that doesn't sound very green to me so explain that yes we have to chop down trees but it really is the only ecologically responsible thing we can do of course this means that the trees have to be replaced uh, when you chop them down because you have to continue the carbon absorption and the oxygen production. The softwood lumber industry has a big black eye on this front because of their poor forestry management and clear cutting and that kind of thing, but mm -hmm. I think they've learned their lesson by now. And the hardwood industry really hasn't ever been in that, that situation. They've uh, always been an advocate of cutting down only you know, the choice tree right. and, and removing what's needed and leaving the rest behind. Um, it's really very different. And in the last 50 years, the volume of available hardwoods in North America, both Canada and the U.S., uh, is almost double what it was 50 years ago. So when we talk about the North American hardwood, what makes it so unique? Why is it part of the green movement? If you take a cabinet door or a dining room table, uh, there's absolutely nothing, not steel, not um, iron, not plastic, not laminate or anything that you can do uh, that is more ecologically friendly than to making it, than making it out of solid hardwood. So when we use hardwood products like the ones being used here in this kitchen, it's actually a green move on the part of the homeowner. So what other applications can we use in the home with North American hardwood? Well, it would be passage doors and framing and uh, trim moldings. Oh, I never uh, thought of the trim. Mm. Entertainment units and furniture in general just like it's always been. So obviously not everything is wood. So what other materials can we use to keep with the green movement when we're upgrading or renovating our home? Well, like ceramic tile, uh, hardwood floors, and that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, anytime that you have something imitating the real thing, as in uh, vinyl floors imitating ceramic or laminate imitating hardwood, hardwood. Uh, I don't see that as being as green because when you inspect it, you find that uh, those are produced to pretty high cost to the environment usually. To give our viewers an idea, let's go ahead and take a tour of this kitchen because they're using the North American hardwood to remodel their cabinet. 
Yeah, this particular homeowner uh, elected to have a white kitchen. She, she wanted a white kitchen, even though um, you know the cupboard, you know, used to have a color to it, as you can see. So this is all the same wood. This is all North American hardwood. This is a North American just... white maple, painted white, um, ah, like as opposed that. to thermofoil or uh, laminate, as is so often the case when they're when they're doing solid colors these days. And many of us might think this is the color it would come because you think maple wood, you know. So it's nice that it can match any decor in our kitchen. Yeah, we're applying new cabinet doors and putting uh, pre-finished uh, veneers and uh, thin ply on the face frames and uh, they'll eventually put on a new countertop to uh, finish the job off. So how are they eco-friendly? A small company uh, has a really hard time being really eco-friendly building this stuff. Uh, it's much better done in a large factory where uh, you can control a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, many jobs today are finished on site. They would apply these things and, and do the painting in the house. So you have no possibility of capturing over, over spray and reusing the product or uh, using up the uh, the leftover solvents that you would use for paint application equipment mm -hmm. and leftover stains and paints and distilling them for reuse, which you can do in a factory. At Elias Woodwork, we've spent 28 years building a brand on these eco-friendly principles. Um, we, you know, we recapture our, our oversprays and, and distill leftover paints and so on to reuse them. Because everything's done at your factory, like you said, and not here. And on only the installation happens here. Are there any sacrifices that we need to make to use green products in our home? I don't really think so. I can't remember being presented a choice where I couldn't choose the more environmentally friendly option and still accommodate my taste uh, for what's attractive and what I think is functional. Uh, it may cost a, a wee little bit more sometimes, right. but that's a sacrifice most people are willing to make when they see the real numbers. Is there any place that we can learn about Elias Woodwork? Yeah, you can visit EliasWoodwork.com to see what we do there, uh, or visit uh, a website put on by uh, Weyerhaeuser, uh, a lumber supplier, uh, called ObeyMotherNature.com. Hmm, okay, that sounds good, and we can learn a lot of information there as well. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, Ralph, thank you so much for being here today and showing us how we can remodel and upgrade our homes in a very green way. We appreciate it's it. It's a pleasure. Well, to learn more about Elias Woodwork, you can visit our website at designingspaces.tv and click on Think Green. For Designing Spaces Think Green, I'm Debbie Marie. Living an energy-efficient lifestyle has a major impact on the environment and cost of living. Both old concepts and new technologies are coming together to make for greener living. Now, there's more to see, so take a look. We're here in Ozark, Missouri to look at a material that has all the benefits you'd want in a roof and diversity of style. In other words, it looks great. Joining Designing Spaces is Jimmy Crow, Executive Vice President of Authentic Roof, here to tell us about a material being used on this roof. Jimmy, thanks for hooking up with us on an actual job site where we can see what looks like slate being applied as a new roof. It's not slate, though, is it? What is it? What we have here is the original authentic roof product. This was invented 23 years ago as the world's first synthetic roofing slate. It was created and designed for a very specific reason. That was to be an improvement on real slate in every way possible. As we'll soon discuss, today that is something that has been achieved. Now, are there benefits to using a synthetic roofing material as opposed to, say, a more traditional roofing material like slate or cedar shakes? Authentic roof, this system, is much lighter in weight than other high-end systems such as real slate, concrete, clay, cement, those types of systems. As you can tell, it's very, very lightweight. Being lightweight, it's easier to install for a contractor, certainly much safer than a lot of high-end roofing materials, and it's extremely durable. You could take a sledgehammer to it, and you'd barely put a mark in it. Adding to the tremendous benefits of the authentic roof system, it provides the total protection package against nature's elements, from wind, rain, snow, ice, hail, even the sun's UV rays are no match for this system. Probably the single greatest benefit with this product is that there is absolutely zero maintenance required. This is a product that you can install one time and leave it alone and you're safe. Whereas other products, other high-end systems, will require annual maintenance, which costs money. What is authentic roof made from? 
The Authentic Roof Synthetic Slates are made from a proprietary blend of the world's highest quality recycled thermal plastics that are compounded together with vital flame retardant additives and UV protection agents to ensure its longevity over time. How long will it last? Another good question, Andy. We give this product a 50-year warranty. The truth is, it will last far beyond that. Real Slate products, as well as various other products that are used quite frequently in North America, don't have such a lifespan. So by going with a synthetic slate product, especially the Authentic Roof product, you're getting a product that you're going to put on one time for a lifetime. This will be the last roof that you ever have to install. How is Authentic Roof different from other synthetic roofs? Well, first and foremost, the Authentic Roof is the original. This was created 23 years ago as the world's first synthetic roofing slate. So certainly it brings a 23-year track record to the table that you won't find in any other product available today. A lot of time and engineering have been put into that to make sure that it's going to last over time. Ultimately, Authentic Roof bears what is called a standalone Class A fire rating, certified by UL here in the United States and ULC in Canada. That simply means that no specialty underlay is required to achieve a Class A rating. It can simply be installed over any Type 2 glass base sheet and you'll have a sufficient Class A roof structure. It has also been tested and certified by the governments of Australia and New Zealand for the collection of rainwater that is ultimately used for human consumption. As a result, this is truly an eco-friendly product. Authentic Roof is certainly comparable cost-wise with other, various other high-end roofing products. However, like anything, you do get what you pay for. Typically, you're going to pay a little bit more up front for the Authentic Roof system, but over time, it is arguably the most cost-effective roofing material in the world, as it is installed one time for a lifetime. Are there other colors available? Absolutely. You can see from this uh, installation here, we've done a multicolored blend. Authentic Roof comes in three standard colors, which are the black, the dark gray, and the light gray. We also have three premium colors, being the plum, the green, and a brown. Some of them you can see in this blend here. And we can see all this on your website? Absolutely. Visit AuthenticRoof.com for more information on installation instructions, technical specifications, as well as to view a very large gallery of some installations completed here in the country, as well as various other places around the world. Well, thanks, Jimmy, for the lesson in roofing materials. My pleasure, Andy. Thank you. And to view this part of the show again, simply go to our website at designingspaces.tv, click on the video section, where you'll also find a link to their website. I'm Andy Flint, we're Designing Spaces, and I'll see you later. Here on Think Green, we believe being aware of your environment is the first step to living a greener lifestyle that ultimately benefits us all. So, take a look. When shopping for a new home, soon-to-be homeowners look at a potential home safety and check the surrounding neighborhood for potential problems down the road. But often overlooked are environmental issues that affect health and home values. To find out what to look for and what potential environmental hazards may be affecting the purchase of your new home or your existing home, we here at Designing Spaces Think Green teamed up with the experts. We traveled to Austin, Texas and met Rob Barber, CEO of Environmental Data Resources, to learn more about the types of problems that may exist with a property. Well, the main thing you want to be looking out for is the either the history of this home and what was here before mm -hmm. that could have created an environmental situation, or there also could be a concern that's much more current because a block away, uh, there's a main road with a lot of sites like gas stations and dry cleaners. Even though a gas station may not be an immediate site, it can still have a negative impact on a home. A gas station with a leaking tank, for example, they, that petroleum product can, and often does, migrate through the, the, the soil. It can have a direct impact on groundwater, and in some cases, it can even create an indoor air quality uh, issue for the homeowner. Sometimes, home buyers need to go outside the conventional disclosure channels and conduct their own due diligence. There could have been something that occurred on this property years ago before the current homeowner uh, was even made aware of it. And so it's not the kind of information that would normally uh, be disclosed to you if you're the buyer. So sometimes you may want to go outside the normal channels to get your own confirmation that the home is environmentally sound. Contaminants can create a situation somewhat similar to radon, 
where the contaminant migrates as a gas inside of the house. Uh, they can penetrate the subsurface and they can come up into basement areas uh, and create a, an indoor air quality and a breathing issue that can have a direct impact on the people in the home. All this sounds very interesting and certainly deserves more attention. So I sat down with Rob to find out a little bit more about environmental data resources. Well, EDR has been around since 1990, and what we've done is created a national database of uh, environmental information with the information coming from the EPA and the state environmental agencies. EDR collects data from the EPA and all of the state and local environmental agencies to bring it together to one national environmental database updated daily. So let's say I enter the address for my house. What kind of information should I expect to see from this website? What you'll get is a search of over 1,400 databases, uh, and if any findings uh, were in a certain radius around your property, uh, things like underground storage tanks, gas stations, all the way up to Superfund sites, that information will be displayed in the report. To find out how someone might best understand the findings of a report, I met up with Vanessa Chambers, who is an environmental specialist with Terracon, an engineering consulting firm out of Dallas, Texas. So Vanessa, um, really you're an environmental professional, correct? Correct. So as an environmental professional, what do you do on a daily basis? Well, I evaluate properties uh, to see if there's been any solar groundwater contamination from former on-site uses or off-site uses. So if there's been a release at a property, it is important to look for when it happened, how it was remediated, where it is, and which direction it's going. I want to know what facilities are around there. I want to know if there's been a dry cleaner release adjacent to the property. I want to know how far it is from the property. I want to know where the groundwater is. History is also an important aspect. Businesses change, but the locations do not. So what is a pie house today could have been a completely different business years ago. We look at several different records to evaluate uh, historical uses of the property. They can be anything from local building department records, they can be historical aerial photographs, historical city directories, and historical fire insurance maps. There is no reason why a report can only be run on a home or a commercial property. To illustrate this point, Rob and I visit a nearby park. We're at a park here that's in a school. Those are places where uh, you, know, you might want to know something about the environment. Uh, daycare centers would be another uh, area like that. So where can I go to get my own report? You can go to environmentalissuesreport.com. Uh, there you'll be able to read about what the environmental issues are that matter, and you can run a report on your home. Very good. Rob, thank you so much for bringing to our attention a potentially hazardous problem that we can now just with a simple click, go to a website and get more information. Thanks, John. I enjoyed it. That's very good. And if you'd like to see more information about the Think Green Project, go to designingspaces.tv. There, not only can you see this program in its entirety again, but you can get a lot of information and a direct link to the EDR website. For Think Green, I'm John McCalmont in Austin, Texas. So what do we want to leave behind for future generations? All of us have the power and ability to make a difference. Together, let's make the right decision and move towards a healthier world. For Designing Spaces, Think Green, I'm David Jones. You can visit these websites to learn more about the participants on this edition of Designing Spaces.